The Chinese government has spent a lot of time reining in the power of large tech companies like Alibaba, and deservedly so. So it is natural that Meituan should receive some scrutiny as well. Meituan, which used to be called Meituan Dianping before a 2020 name change, has risen to become China's third largest tech company. Starting off as a Groupon clone, Meituan has parlayed its success into a super app on par with Tencent's WeChat. Founder and CEO Wang Xing seeks to make Meituan the king of China's online-to-offline space. He is now taking the company on a new journey, challenging big incumbents in the massive community buying space and burning plenty of cash in doing so. In this video, we're going to look at one of China's newest and most ruthless tech giants. But first, I want to kindly ask you if you would be interested in the Patreon. If you are interested in what this channel does, you can support the work by joining the Early Access tier. Early Access members get to see videos before they are released to the public. So head on over to the Patreon page and take a look. I deeply appreciate anything you'd be able to sign up for. Thank you, and on with the show. In 2010, Wang Xing, a serial entrepreneur with experience in the United States, started a website called Meituan. He had been inspired by Groupon, and Meituan was essentially a China-based copy. Meituan joined a morass of nearly 5,000 Groupon copycats in the Chinese internet space. If they did not differentiate themselves, then they would drown in a sea of competitors. I don't know if you remember those days back in the United States, but Groupon's surge and growth foreshadowed Ubers years later. The industry burned immense amounts of venture capital. You had to hire thousands of salespeople to knock on small businesses' doors and convince them to sign up. Faced with so much competition from companies like Lasho.com indiscriminately buying their way into the lead, Wang decided to reject such unsustainable spending and focused on efficiency and profitability. This focus paid off the next year when the market shook out and funding tightened up. Fortunately, Meituan had enough cash in the bank to survive. By then, Wang had established his business playbook, a focus on efficiency and cost leadership through the use of technology, ruthless horizontal expansion, and a zen comfort with competition. Meituan began its move towards something bigger with the 2012 launch of Maoyuan Dianying, an online movie ticketing site. This came just two years after the company's founding. Movie tickets made a lot of sense for Meituan's first expansion. Movie times can be indexed and updated, People like to buy tickets ahead of time so to reserve the best seats, and lots of people like to see movies. Meituan followed up Maoyan with a flurry of product launches. A year later in 2013, they stepped into the hotel booking space. They also entered food delivery, soon to be one of their core services. In 2015, Meituan expanded once more into transportation ticketing with train and airplane tickets. The company also announced a merger with Dianping.com, a restaurant reviews website launched in 2003 that is kind of like China's Yelp. Dianping had good traction in first and second tier cities like Shanghai, but they lagged behind in China's other urban areas. The merger allowed Meituan to add Dianping's established customer base to its own and consolidate the industry. The merger was pitched as a combination of equals and the two companies would collaborate on innovation. But Wang quickly sidelined Dianping's founder, Zhang Tao, and replaced the team with his own. The new company emerged as a heavyweight in the Chinese tech landscape. They raised money and continued their horizontal expansion throughout the Chinese local services ecosystem. In 2018, Meituan went public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, raising $4.2 billion at a valuation of $50 billion. The stock has done well since then, and today it has a $220 billion market cap. Meituan is a sprawling beast with over 200 offered services, but its product lines are all centered on offline services ordered online. I already talked about Maoyuan, its movie ticketing service. It also has its food and grocery delivery services, Waimai and Meituan Grocery. The company has majority share, over 65%, in the Chinese food delivery business. Alibaba-backed leading competitor Elimi has less than 30%. Its travel and hotel booking products, Meituan has majority share of the Chinese online hotel booking market, according to their Q3 2020 earnings report. And Meituan services more than just consumers, too. In 2016, the company launched supply chain, online advertising tools, and cloud-based enterprise resource planning software for their many small business merchants. This is their first expansion into software, and it helps lock in those businesses into the Meituan platform. The company makes revenue from sales commissions, online advertising from vendors on its platform, and other service fees. Fiscal year 2020 revenues total $17 billion USD. 
WeChat is China's most famous super app. What started out as a simple chat app has bundled together various parts of people's lives to meet all of their daily needs. Meituan follows a similar strategy, referred to in its annual reports as food plus platform. Meituan has built proficiencies in delivering many types of items. For instance, they recently added delivery of flowers, medicines, and more. But the biggest revenue and profit drivers are food and groceries. The food delivery business is so important to Meituan because it is so commonly used in China. Like with the rest of the world, the pandemic has accelerated food delivery adoption. Over 421 million Chinese have placed a food delivery order, 86% of whom are white-collar workers. Furthermore, they use it quite often, an average of 25.5 transactions in 2019. Since food delivery is so frequently used, it drives traffic for Meituan's other services like travel bookings, in-store dining, and even wedding planning. This is the platform part of the Food Plus platform strategy. Cross-selling these local services makes Meituan even more of a destination for Chinese consumers. That titanic transaction volume helps drive scale. In 2020, Meituan hired 9.5 million drivers, more than the population of Austria. This titanic scale lets them dispatch their delivery men on the most optimal routes, minimize downtime, and be the low-cost leader. Meituan had been one of those rare companies with backing from both Alibaba and Tencent. Rivals in the Chinese internet space, Wang had originally raised money from Alibaba, but after the 2015 merger with Dianping, Tencent, as a Dianping investor, had the option to invest in the combined entity. They did, pitching in a billion dollars in a 2016 fundraising round. Tencent's friendly relationship with Meituan continues to this day, with the latter's favorable feature placement within the WeChat ecosystem. Alibaba sold their stake at a discount from the 2016 round. Citing their focus on their own homegrown online to offline services division, in an interesting 2017 interview, Wang talked a little bit about Meituan's relationship with the two titans. He likened it to China's relationship with the United States and the Soviet Union, which is pretty fun to think about if you're familiar with that stuff. After the Dianping merger, Wang went to Jack Ma and Daniel Zhang, today Alibaba CEO, to talk about resetting relations, and in it he says. I thought we could learn from the successful merger of Didi and Kuai Dadi. Alibaba and Tencent fought endlessly. Eventually, they shook hands and made up, and now they are both shareholders of Didi. And so I told Alibaba that Meituan sincerely hoped it could receive support from both Tencent and Alibaba, but they said, "You are completely mistaken. We think the consolidation of Didi and Kuai Dadi was a failure. We will not make the same mistake again." Alibaba thereafter began developing several directly competing services to Meituan. As Meituan finished up on 2020, they warned investors to expect several quarters of operating losses as the company continues its battles and expands into community buying. To fund this expansion, the company raised 10 billion U.S. dollars by selling debt and equity. Wang is so willing to stir up dust with titans like Alibaba because he is, in general, very comfortable with competition. Meituan's style of horizontal expansion means charging forward into a field of crowded incumbents. This latest competitive push takes Meituan into community purchasing with its Meituan Select service. Community purchasing is a new Chinese e-commerce trend where communities can set up local groups for bulk buying. It's kind of like Groupon but more localized. Pinduoduo pioneered this model where people can band together to unlock group discounts. Founded in 2015, Pinduoduo is now worth 140 billion dollars, and its founder Colin Huang is one of China's richest people. The community group buying concept began in China's hinterlands, massive cities with millions of people that nobody has ever heard of, like Dandong, Panjing, and Fuchun. It's a titanic market estimated to be worth 100 billion dollars in 2021. Meituan is not going to win it though without a fight. Meituan Select directly competes with JD.com's Ding Dong Mai Tai, Xinxian Youshen, Pinduoduo's Duoduo Mai Tai, Alibaba's Taobao Mai Tai, and Didi Chuxing's Changxing Youshen. I should mention, interestingly enough, Pinduoduo is also a Tencent investment, having scaled up in their early days through their usage of WeChat groups and mini programs. The Meituan team is definitely not afraid of stepping on their siblings' toes. Wang is a student of history. In interviews, he quotes Chairman Mao and cites the Hundred Regiments Offensive, 
a glorious World War II Chinese victory commanded by CCP Guomindan General Peng Dehuai. He would be a great oceanometry viewer. Considering Wang's knowledge of history, a recent deleted post on his social media is worth closing with. May 2021, he posted on the social media network fanfo.com a 1,000-year-old poem by Zhang Jie titled The Book Burning Pit. Then he deleted it, because he knew he'd done goofed. Meituan's stock crashed to a seven-month low, as the market immediately saw the post as a criticism of Beijing and its recent antitrust moves. The Chinese government has been very sensitive of such things, starting with the very public beatdown of Alibaba Group after the Jack Ma speech. Meituan is very comfortable with conflict. They have carried their zen through years of battles and horizontal industry invasions. But now, perhaps, they have come across an opponent against which they cannot win. All right, everyone, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. If you want more content, you can like and subscribe to the channel. I would like if you did. And uh, remember to hit up the email newsletter. And if you want to send me an email, drop me a line at johnandasianometry.com. I love getting letters from viewers. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.